In recent days, China's semiconductor stocks have surged, driven by a low-profile company named Yuliang Sheng, known in English as Yuye or Yuya Send. Its immersion deep ultraviolet lithography machine, commonly called DUV, passed testing at Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation's production line with promising results. This milestone signals that China has resolved the equipment localization challenge for 28 nanometers mature chip processes. DUV technology can produce 7 nanometers or even 5 nanometers chips through multiple exposures, though with suboptimal yield and cost. Nonetheless, this breakthrough marks a critical technological node, securing China's strategy to dominate the mature chip market with robust technical assurance. Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation has already been gaining ground in the mature chip market, leveraging significant price advantages to capture global share and meet soaring domestic demand. This enables China to fully localize chip supply for unmanned production lines, robotics, electric vehicles, smart homes, drones, aerospace, and military technology. Public information about UEA is scarce, but it is a Shanghai-based semiconductor equipment developer with strong government backing, closely tied to Huawei, much like Shenzhen's Zincoli, known as C-Carrier. Many believe these firms originated from Huawei's chip division, tasked with coordinating upstream and downstream industry partners to develop independent Chinese semiconductor equipment. Alongside them, Shenzhen State Capital established three chip foundries, Pingxinhuai, known as PXW, Xingweixu, known as Suishur, and Pingxingxu, known as PXX, collectively dubbed Huawei's Shadow Three Brothers. They focus on 14 to 28 nanometers logic and memory chips. Huawei contributes its technical expertise, while state investments from Shanghai and Shenzhen secure control and share development benefits. Building an entire chip supply chain requires substantial funding and private sector involvement. Government and banks address financing, but cannot single-handedly create an ecosystem. If Huawei dominated the ecosystem, other firms would hesitate to participate. Thus, the current model sees Huawei providing technology, government supplying funds, and other companies joining in. Huawei overcomes technological blockades the government gains an independent ecosystem, and other firms share growth dividends, balancing benefits and risks. These companies rarely publicize because they face no need to boost visibility. They start with defined customers, market demand, and precise equipment specifications, focusing on targeted R&D to replace imported equipment and materials. Backed by ample state capital from Shenzhen and Shanghai, they require no external financing. Beyond hiring, they have minimal external engagement. Their core staff, previously employed at Huawei, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, or other leading chip firms, possess strong R&D capabilities, with some recruited from foreign companies. These firms hire selectively through headhunters, and entry-level recruitment reveals little about operations, keeping them under the radar. C-Carrier was similarly obscure until its trade show appearance. Rumors suggest it is collaborating with Huawei and Shenzhen on a 5 nanometers production line with notable progress, fueling high interest. Speculation about a 5 nanometers trial line announcement by year end is met with cautious optimism. The timeline may be tight, but within a year, achieving early TSMC 5 nanometers levels seems feasible. Combined with Huawei and other Chinese firms' advances in photonic chips and advanced packaging like stacking, Chip performance could improve significantly despite process limitations. While not yet matching TSMC's cutting-edge technology, it suffices for most applications. China's approach to resolving the chip process crisis involves multiple parallel strategies. In Shanghai, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation leads, supported by orders from Huawei and others, with UEA addressing DUV development to ensure equipment supply for mature chip processes, boosting 14 nanometers and above market share. For 7 nanometers and below, particularly 5 nanometers processes and EUV development, Huawei and C Carrier lead in Shenzhen. These are distinct production lines and ecosystems, both showing progress, 
though Shanghai's advancements are faster due to lower technical hurdles. Beyond logic chips, Shenzhen's Shadow 3 brothers are developing memory chips, primarily DROM, alongside established players like Yangtze Memory and CXMT, and emerging AI chip firms like Cambrian and More Threads. China's chip industry has achieved independent survival, operating outside the U.S. technology system. However, gaps remain, as the U.S. and its Western allies form a decades-old technological coalition with a natural lead. The U.S. technology war has awakened Chinese firms, with even automakers like BYD developing chips to ensure independence and avoid political disruptions. As domestic AI models like DeepSeek, Huan, and Dobao advance, alongside the chip industry's relentless catch-up, a significant technological leap is expected next year. A major update to DeepSeek's model based on Huawei chips is particularly anticipated. Let us wait and see.